Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cadenet TV. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cadenet TV. My apologies uh, for the late start this morning. In fact, I had to uh, to create a, a new event, a new uh, on on air hangout. Uh, so, uh, so my apologies this morning. I'm happy that you are able to to join us uh, today. Uh, with me today is Tim Triton. Tim is uh, with the Emergency Management Agency of the Province of Alberta. And Tim, welcome. Thank you, David. Uh, we are here today to talk about public alerting in Canada, uh, why it's important, uh, where we are today, and where we're headed. Uh, Tim is a well-known Canadian expert in the field, uh, doing a lot of innovative things in in Alberta, and so we'll uh, we'll we'll do a little canvas of the the landscape today. So Tim, let let's start off maybe just by uh, telling people what public alerting is and why it's so important. Sure, public alerting in in uh, has rapidly grown in the last ten years as a way of getting a message out to the to the general public about uh, something which impacts them, it's immediate, it's urgent, and it's usually life-threatening. It's not about communications, uh, we need more blankets, it's about this is go something bad is about to happen to you, you need to be aware of this, and here are some actions that you can take. Most common one, for example, would be a tornado that most people would think of. Tornado is touched down, is heading in your direction, either shelter in place or evacuate the area. So public alerting uh, is really about getting a message out to people which is life-saving, it's urgent, and it's, uh, it's directly relevant to the individuals uh, as a whole. It's really important to remember that public alerting is about a message that saves lives. It's not about information generally, it's about saving lives. A very, very good overview. And, and you know, when you and I chat about public alerting, we, we like to talk about the number of stakeholders that are involved and the need really to connect the dots, uh, you know, players from uh, what we refer to as last mile distributors like broadcasters, radio, TV, uh, telephone uh, operators, yep. uh, the agencies themselves that are that are issuers of the alerts like uh, like the uh, Emergency Management Agency of Alberta. Yep. Um, how important is it to, to bring everyone together and get on a common page? It's, uh, it's critical. I mean, to me, public alerting involves four separate phases. First of all, someone has to initiate the alert. Second of all, you need an infrastructure to deliver that message. Third, you have some to have some way that that message is distributed to the general public, and and usually through what we call the last mile distrib distributors (LMDs). And finally, the public has to know what to do. It's not enough to say there's a bad thing coming your way, but the public has to hear that message and be able to respond to it. So there's a public education component. All four of those pieces have to work together to be effective. If any one of those four pieces fall apart, then you have people at risk, and in fact, people die. Now you're doing some innovative things in Alberta, including you know recently launching a uh, a mobile app. Which mm -hmm. I know I use and 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 uh, alerts me of what's going on in Alberta. Even though I'm in Ontario, I've got it set for the receive alerts uh, happening in Alberta. Tell us a little bit about why you created that app and and what the reception's been. The reception's been excellent. We um, the reality is that people are shifting away from the traditional media. Uh, I like to liken it to the fact that people. Uh, used to get their news via the newspaper and now they get it through a whole series of distribution channels which didn't exist quite frankly ten years ago. Uh, social media has become incredibly important. We have about a hundred and ten thousand followers on our social media sites, uh, for Twitter and Facebook. People are getting their news. If they're not in the car during the commute and they're not around the TV in the late night, uh, or the supper time hour, they're getting their news, they're getting their information via their smartphone. And quite frankly, uh, I was looking at some recent numbers from CRTC, 88% of Albertans have uh, now have a, have Alberta help, have households have smartphones compared to 82% which have landlines. That's the way people get the news. So to, to deliver, an, I, I tell people by analogy, to deliver an alerting system to people um, that doesn't access smartphones makes as much sense as us delivering alerting system via the newspaper. It just, we have to go where the people are. 
Absolutely. And and there are a, a wide ranging uh, group of stakeholders, you know, even with it within the province of Alberta. And I know you want mm -hmm. to touch on a little bit of some of the work you're doing with the radio amateurs. Right. Yeah. One of the things that we've done here recently is we've hooked up our alerting system, the Alberta Emergency Alert System, to the Southern Alberta uh, uh, Repeater Associations, which is the Amateur Radio Society. Uh, to me, I put smartphones on one side and amateur radio another. There's it's about a distribution channel that works. All the distribution channels have a way of reaching people, and whether it's amateur radio, the most traditional, hardcore emergency management communication system, or whether it's smartphones. Everybody uh, has a way to be reached one way or another, and uh, a good alerting system, in my opinion, reaches out and embraces all those those medias. So. Yeah. We've hooked up, but again, and I'd just like to clarify, these are just for critical alerts. These would be broadcast intrusive, something where uh, life and limb is an immediate risk. Absolutely understood, but there are many other alerts that, that are out there that uh, that people, uh, you know, in some mm -hmm. cases want to be, be informed about, and there are those that, you know, maybe blur that distinction between uh, uh, my life being threatened, but maybe somebody else's life is being threatened. And a perfect example of an alert in that case might be it might be an Amber Alert. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a very good point. Uh, last year we issued about 101 alerts in Alberta, of which uh, somewhere around 40. If I let me just check my stats here, 28 were were critical. In other words, they were life, limb, tornado, flooding, that sort of situation. So far this year, we've issued five critical alerts where they're broadcast intrusive. Those are all around flooding with, uh, with one amber, uh, two amber alerts actually this year, which is unusual. Amber alert is one situation where it's a little bit different. As it, critical alerts are broadcast intrusive, broadcast interrupt, are generally about something bad is about to happen to you. Amber alerts is a, um, an alert which we send out for something bad is about to happen to a child. And we've, uh, we've, of course, had some unfortunate situations here. So far, uh, since 2002, we've issued 21 Amber Alerts um, and uh, in the province of Alberta. Uh, luckily and thankfully, they're only that's a very rare occurrence. We have one or two a year. This has been an unusual year so far, actually. So, so we'll, uh, let's talk a little bit maybe about where we think we're headed now. Uh, Tata, mm -hmm. a year ago we held a public alerting workshop uh, largely on behalf of uh, folks at uh, Industry Canada, Public Safety Canada and the, uh, the defense research mm -hmm. folks who were interested primarily in, in wireless alerting. How could we get uh, alerts to cell phone? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now we're planning uh, today for a national public alerting summit uh, to be held in Edmonton in your backyard yeah. uh, in February of next year. And what we really want to discuss at that summit is is where we're headed. So, paint a little yeah. picture of, of what you think where we where we are headed. Well, I think there's there's a couple of things that we can build on. Two or three that I see right off the bat. Bat one is I'd like to see the government agencies expanding Amber Alerts to via email. Alberta and BC now have a program in which an Amber Alert is issued. We send it out via email, and I'm hoping that the other jurisdictions will consider a program similar to that. Second one is, as you wish I mentioned, is wireless public alerting. As I said, people are using their cell phones, uh, their smartphones. This is where they live. So uh, being able to get them is really important. The key issue, though, David, is not to require subscription. In other words, I don't have to phone in or download the app or do all that, any kind of preliminary work. We want to be able to broadcast a message out to your smartphone uh, either through an SMS technology or through the, uh, the wireless public going cell broadcasting technology. That has a big advantage in that we reach people uh, where they live on their smartphones and we reach them using the best available technology. And uh, I think the, the National Public Alerting Project, which is going ahead in, in uh, Ontario, is a good example of starting to take that step forward. The second thing that I, I think we see, we'll see is so using social media as a force multiplier. And this is a, another step down the road, but we'll use public alerting as a two-way conversation instead of a monologue. Right now, with public alerting, it's a monologue. We yell, run south bravely, and people receive the message. 
Ultimately, I can see things like the Puget Sound First to Sea application in which we start to receive information from the general public, uh, much like, and I, I draw the analogy to 911. You know, we were very comfortable with 911. The public calls in and we dispatch resources. I see that eventually as the next stage in public alerting as a whole, overall, in that organizations, emergency management organizations, will start to receive information from the general public through, uh, through an app or through some sort of uh, communication channel, and they will be able to start to give that information out synthesize, turn it into useful data, and then be able to allocate resources. So that's, those are two things that I see as the complementary. Are we there yet? Obviously not, but you know, I think that's certainly where we're going to be heading. Well, thank you, Tim, for sharing your thoughts today with us. Um, and you can, as everyone can, can hear, uh, Tim is uh, quite well versed and quite passionate about the space of public alerting. Uh, and uh, Tim will be speaking at our National Public Alerting Summit in uh, in February in Edmonton, February 17th and 18th. In CADA, we will be uh, announcing details of that event shortly. So stay tuned for more on that uh, and and watch for uh, watch for news on, on the event. Tim, yeah. thanks again for uh, joining us today. Thank you, David. I appreciate the opportunity to share some of this. So for now, that's that's it for CADA Net TV. I'm David Farns uh, signing off. Thank you for joining us.